Right then lads, so judging by the title of this video, you'll probably already know what today's topic's gonna be. About my wonderful time working at the great establishment known as JD Sports. And for those of you who don't know what JD Sports is, it's basically it's a retail store outlet that sells like sports clothes, sporting equipment, uh, fancy pantsy bloody chavy clothes. Like, now don't get me wrong, I'm not saying obviously everyone's a fucking chav who goes there, but 9 times out of 10 chavs fucking shop there like. You know the sort, the ones who hang around fucking shops and beg you to go and get some fags for them or some drinks for them and all that and you gotta say, fuck off mate, I ain't buying you no fucking fags. And then they're more like, nah fam, how are you gonna do me like that still? Don't know who my cousin is you get me, big cousin here. I swear to Christ some people talk like that 24 fucking 7, it's fucking hilarious. But anyway, getting back on topic. So the first time I got my job at JD was a, it was a couple of years back, like fucking 2, 3, 4 years ago. I can't remember exactly how long ago, like, but it was a Christmas temp job. You know the ones when they just hire a bunch of people just because it's Christmas and they need like a shit ton of staff to hire. Yeah, I was one of them. And during this period in my life, I think it was the second job I ever had. My first job I had was uh, working with my dad down in the factory. So prior to working in JD, I had no retail experience whatsoever. But I had a rough idea of what to expect, you know, just greet customers, say hello, help them out, yada yada yada. And for the most part, it was just that, but then... Eight times out of ten, the customers you try and greet and help and whatnot, they were either rude, stuck up fucking cunts, chavvy little fucking bastards who were trying to rob shit, or they were just trying to look for a fucking discount and be like, oh, what's the best price on this? What's the best price on that? The fucking price is on the fucking tag, you freak. Stop asking me, you knobhead. I'm not the fucking manager. I'm not going to fucking do your discount. Oh, hook me up, bro. Hook me up. What the fuck am I going to hook you up for? I don't even know you, you dumb cunt. But for the most part, dealing with customers was easy to me. It's just if I say hello to them and they say hello back, just you know, ask them if they need any help. If they didn't, cool. If they did, help them out. Or alternatively, if they blanked you, then you know, cool. Fuck you, you prick. But for anybody who's worked in retail before, it's not the fucking customers that are the most annoying part of it. It's your colleagues. And there's always two types of colleagues that you get in any sort of retail jobs. There's either the proper sound ones who you'll get along with perfectly fine. You'll be going out clubbing with them, drinking with them, mates basically. And then you get the second type who are either fucking snitching pricks or brown nosing cunts. Like the sort that'll snitch on you just for being a minute late on your break. Like, really? You're that fucking sad you're paying attention to how long I've been on my bastard break? Fuck off. But aside from the shitty customer from time to time and the shitty colleagues that you had to work with, for the most part I enjoyed it. It was really fucking good. But for the most part, my job was pretty easy. All I had to do was just greet customers, make sure my area was tidy and that was it. And try and prevent people from robbing and all that. Which was bullshit because every time someone would rob something, I'd either be on my break or I wouldn't be working. To be fair, all I wanted was that £200 bonus for catching a thief, but nope, they always seem to find a way to steal shit when I'm not working. Fuckers. But oh, for the most part, it was pretty easy. Just, you know, make sure my area was tidy, talk to customers, jobs are good. But this one day in particular really pissed me off and was the main reason why I got fired from the place. So my shift starts. I can't remember exactly what time my shift started, but I think it was somewhere like midday because I know I was on the close night. So you know, I get ready, I get my staff clothes on, I go out, I go make sure my hair is tidy, I talk to customers, yada yada yada. But then it comes around to my break time. Now usually what happens, you have to go to a senior member of staff, or you have to go to a supervisor and just say, I'm going on my break, can you get somewhere to cover my section? They'll be like, oh yeah, yeah, we'll find someone, and then they find someone to get to cover your section. Jobs are good. But the person they got to cover my area was, well, for better words, it's a fucking prick. Let's call him, um, Bert. Bert was a fucking knobhead. You know them kind of knobbers who have them fucking pubic hair beards and you had a fucking bright fucking blonde hair? He was a fucking twat, man. I wanted to smash his face in so bad. Now you're probably thinking, Joe, fucking hell, that's a bit harsh. Like, why do you want to smash this geezer's face in? Well, you know how previously I was on about them kind of people who snitch on you for, like, basic shit? Yeah, he was one of them fucking pricks. And I don't know why he was doing it. He was just trying to get up the fucking manager's arse to try and get, like, you know, extra hours and extra pay. And it was like, bro, like, what the fuck, man? You're just a snaky, shady piece of shit, man. But anyway, I go on my break, I go up to KFC, I grab a two-piece chicken meal. You know, fucking Boston, I love KFC, it's Boston. So I eat my food, I check the time, I've got about 10 minutes to get back to work. And I'm like, oh fine, I'll just walk back to work, get myself ready, yada yada yada. So I'm in the staff room, you know, prepping myself up, you know, putting my work clothes back on. Because you're not supposed to wear work clothes when you're out of work, it's weird. You have to like wear a jacket on and stuff like that. So then I go out back on the shop floor and I go up to my section. And I'm like, alright mate, I'm, I'm back in my section now, you can go back to doing whatever you was doing. And the cheeky fucker turns around to me and he says, Oh, what time do you call this? I'm like, what are you on about? I'm back at work, are I? And he's like, Oh, you're two minutes late. And I'm like, yeah, I was, I was out back, I was sticking my jacket away, and now what's the problem? 
Oh, but you're late. <laughs> and at this point, I just felt like calling him a fucking twat, but, you know, I stayed calm. I was like, oh, well, you know, my bad, like, you know, I was, I was taking my stuff out and whatnot, you know. So then he pisses off back to his section. But while he was going back to his section, he turned around to one of the supervisors and he said I was 10 minutes late. The little fucking snitch. Like, first off, I wasn't 10 minutes late, I was 2 minutes late. And secondly, who the fuck does that, like, snitches on someone for fucking 2 minutes? Like, this fucking Burt guy is a Oh my god. But to be fair to the supervisor that this Bert talked to, he was pretty sound and he, like, he just came up to me, he was, um, how long was your break? And I was like, oh, well, it was, so it was half an hour long, like, I came back at such and such time, I was about two minutes late. He was like, oh, fair enough, fair enough, like, I'm, so why is he lying? I was like, I don't know, I think he's a bit of a prick, to be honest, like. And he was like, you know, I, to be fair, I think he's a bit of a knobhead as well. Now, I can't remember the name of this supervisor, but he was pretty sound. I know he supported Birmingham and that was about it. But yeah, me and him always used to just talk about football and he was pretty ace. But then came the closing time and we usually close around, I think it was about 12-ish. Well, that's when the shutter doors came closing down and then we'd leave until, say, like half one-ish because we had to stay behind to tidy up all the clothes, make sure all the pegs was up, all the fucking new tags and all that malarkey, like. Basically prepping the store for the next morning so when the next people come in to do their shifts, everything's all sorted and they can just get on with the work. Now how our store worked was we'd have a couple of people at the front, a couple of people in the middle and a couple of people at the back sorting out their sections of the store. And then once they've sorted out their section of the store they can go and speak to a manager or supervisor and they can get signed out and clocked out. So for this day I was sectioned at the back of the store where all the kids stuff and all the girls stuff and all that malarkey was. And at the start of the day I was sectioned at the front of the store. But later on through the day the supervisor moved me out at back because it was a real bad mess and he knew I was pretty good at cleaning up and whatnot. So I thought you know sorry I'll go out back and tidy up. So I'm doing my job, I'm tidying up my section, make sure all the clothes are more lined up and whatnot, make sure there's no like let loose clothes and hangers and whatnot. And I look around and I think, you know, my area looks pretty fine, I'm going to speak to a supervisor and then I'm going to clock out. So then I got to speak to a supervisor and clock out, but this supervisor I've never spoken to before and he's, he's one of them pricks who have got like spaghetti as a fucking hairstyle. Fucking, oh, I hate that hairstyle, man. But anyway, I spoke to the supervisor, got clocked out, went to go and see my mate because he was giving me a lift back home. But just before we went home, I decided to go and grab a McDonald's because it was 24 hour and I, thought, you know, I was really fucking hungry. And as I'm getting my food, I get a phone call and it turns out it was work. And I was like, oh shit, what are you phoning me for? Have I forgot something? Have I left something all? But no, but it was that fucking supervisor, the one with spaghetti hair. And he was phoning up to say, oh, Joe, why is your area shit? Whoa, 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 whoa. And I was like, hold on a sec. Like, I told you my area was fine. You had a look yourself and you said my area was fine. Like, what's the problem? Oh, but you forgot this section. Unbeknownst to me, another little section of it was part of that section, but I wasn't made aware of it. So obviously that area was a bit of a shit tip. But, you know, that wasn't really my fault. But he's fucking effing and blinding down the phone. And I'm like, fucking hell, like, what's this geezer's fucking problem? So I thought, you know what, bollocks to it. I'm going to go back to work and I'm going to confront the guy and say, like, look, like, I apologise for that area being a mess. I wasn't known that was part of my section. But, you know, I would appreciate it if you don't swear at me and all that. You know, be polite to the guy and all that. And I was sort of expecting the guy to turn around and be like, oh, you know, like, you know, I appreciate you coming back to try and check out your section, yada, 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 you know, and apologise to me. But no, this guy was a fucking dickhead and he started having a go at me about it and I was like, whoa, like, why are you having a go at me for? All I'm asking is for you to not talk to me like shit. I'd appreciate it if you just explain to me what I've done wrong, I will fix it, and that's it. And then he starts talking about, oh, wait for me after one o'clock and then we'll talk then, and I'm like, what the fuck on, are you threatening me right now, you little prick? And he's like, oh no, I'm not threatening you, I'm not threatening you, and I'm like, bro, you are telling me to wait for you after work, that sounds like a fucking threat to me, you prick, I'll smash your face in right now. And during this time, fucking all the different staff came around, and it was like, eyeing up the fucking situation, and we're like, oh, oh, and all that, you know, like how people just stand around and fucking spectate an argument and whatnot. And then the situation started getting heated, so you know, I thought, you know, fuck it, I'm gonna walk off. And then as I was walking off, it was closing the shutters, and I thought, you know, fuck this, I'm gonna give my two cents to this prick. Then I quickly slid under the fucking shutters like a fucking ninja and then like, you know, confronted him again. I said like, look, I want to speak to you in private. Can I speak to you in private? So I turned around to the dude and I'm like, dude, can I just speak to you in private then around the corner? And he was like, oh, why do you have to speak to me in private? And I'm like, bro, there's everyone's watching. That's why I want to speak to you in private. So then he comes around like a sore little fucking kid and he's like, oh, what do you want to talk about? And I'm like, bro, I, I honestly don't know what your fucking problem is. I don't know why you've got an attitude with me. I'm just asking you to not speak to me like a prick. You know, speak with a bit of fucking courtesy, because, you know, you're a supervisor. Speak with a bit of respect towards your staff, and that's it. And I'll do my best to rectify what I've done before, and I'll know now to make sure that area is tidy. And he's like, oh, all right, then, you know, let's just forget this situation ever happened, yada, yada, yada. And I'm like, all right, then. So then I go home, I go to sleep, and then I wake up the next morning for to do my next shift. Unbeknownst to me, this little fucking twat of a supervisor with a fucking spaghetti hair went to a fucking other different managers and he found them up late at night and he was like, 
slagging me off and saying like, oh, Joe was threatening me, he was about to hit me, and yeah, yeah, I've got video proof. Blah, blah, blah. So then I'm guessing by the next morning, the managers came in, must have checked CCTV footage. They obviously can't tell what he was talking about because he doesn't pick up voices, but he can obviously pick up, you know, visual and like cues and all that malarkey. And it's, all it sees me is just sliding under the fucking the shutters and getting in this geezer's face. And they must have took this as me being a physical threat. When I wasn't, I just wanted to speak to the guy in private because everyone else was bloody watching and I wanted to like, you know, speak to him one-on-one -on -one kind of thing. But this guy being a fucking little rat that he is, he tried to fucking make it as so I was physically threatening him when really it was the other way around, he was the one being a prick to me and I just wanted him to stop being a knobhead. Anyway, I go into the staff room, I get ready to do my shift and next you know the manager's call me into the office and I'm like, oh, Joe, because of this situation we're going to have to let you go because it's physical violence, blah, 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 blah. And I'm like... What the fuck, there was nothing physical about it. If anything, the geezer was being a prick to me, but I didn't really have a leg to stand on because nobody was going to back up my case. So I thought, you know, fuck it like, and fuck you all like. So then I grab my stuff out of the staff room, and I piss off out of the store, and I've never been in there since. Kind of wish I smashed the geezer's face in there. <laughs> but you know what, we're going to get to the good part in a second. Because just before the Christmas period started out is when I got my job there. But then a couple of weeks afterwards, my mate, let's just call him Terry, he got a job there as well. And his job was to sort out all the stock in the back room, so he never came out in the front of the store, he was always out back. And during this time he was telling me how all the other members of staff really missed me and all that malarkey, and I was like, yeah, they missed me, but they didn't fucking help me try and get out of the situation. Fucking pricks. But a couple of weeks go by, and then this uh, Terry informs me that that manager with the spaghetti hair got knocked the fuck out. And I was like, what the hell did he get knocked out? Well it turns out that like, geezer with the spaghetti hair went out club in the day after and he was trying to give it to Larry Large in the club. But a couple of mates who I knew saw him and he was trying to give it to Larry Large to him. Next thing you know, they go outside and they knock him the fuck out. So I confirmed this, because when I asked him, they was like, oh, I'm going to a fight the other day. And I was like, oh, who did you knock out? And they was like, oh, this geezer with some spaghetti fucking hair who's trying to give it the sicken. I was like, hold on a sec, was he skinny? Blonde hair, like slightly tall. And they was like, yeah, yeah. And I was like, oh my fucking God. And with my mate Terry telling me exactly the same thing, I'll put two and two together and I was like, no way. The same geezer got fucking banged. And I was just fucking crying in laughter, man. I was like, no fucking way. Karma is a bitch. And then after that event, I think that manager never came back to that store again. I think he must have pissed off to a different store or something. But my mate Terry never told me anything about that geezer again. Because he never came back. So moral of the story, don't be a fucking brick. Because karma will either bite you in the ass or get smashed in the face. So yeah, that was my um, time at JD Sports. And uh, yeah, it was pretty, pretty eventful. Now don't get me wrong, working in retail is fucking great, man. You meet some amazing people and you'll be friends with them for fucking years and years and years. But there is quite a lot of people in there who are very snaky and shady, man. Like my only tip I can really give to someone who wants to work in retail, just, just be careful who you get close with and be careful who you open up to. Because if you're not careful, they might turn around and start using that information you're telling them against you. So yeah, that's the end of the video, lads. I say I hope you guys like it, because I've never really done these kind of videos before. Telling stories and whatnot, but, you know, I hope you guys enjoyed it. Oh, and just a quick note on the gameplay, I'm just playing on the new incursions on the division with my mates Joe, Koo and Einstein. So yeah, that's the end of the video, I'll say I appreciate your time watching it, and I'll say I'll catch you all in a bit. Ta-ra, bit. Ta-ra, ta-ra, ta-ra.